Ah, the Google Pixel 6a, one of the most criminally underrated devices of 2022. First came the 60 Hz controversy that made headlines on Twitter being its own trending hashtag, then came the fingerprint issue where any finger could unlock the phone, then came the overheating issue, and the list just goes on and on. And while yes, these are all valid concerns, I definitely think they're overblown and haven't been the experience for the majority of users. And especially at its price tag of $449, I definitely think this is a really big contender for the best budget phone of 2022 and the phone most people should honestly be choosing if they want an Android phone. Let me tell you why and give you my experience from weeks of daily usage with this phone. Alright, starting off with the hardware, I would describe this as a medium sized phone which is comfortable to hold with a 6.1 inch display and also decently light with its plastic back or what Google calls their 3D thermoformed composite back. Now I know what you're all thinking, doesn't plastic feel cheap? First of all, Google did a good job with making the back feel almost like glass, but less slippery and grippier. And second of all, most people will be putting this phone in a case anyway, so you won't be feeling it during usage. It also makes the phone lighter and more durable to drops, which is actually more beneficial than glass. The Pixel 6a also uses an aluminum frame which feels solid, and metal buttons which feel super clicky and not mushy. The camera bar is also pretty unobtrusive as it barely sticks out of the phone and allows the phone to lay flat on a table. Whether you like the design or not, I think it looks pretty unique and creates a unique identity for Google, just like Apple's infamous notch displays. But the externals don't really matter as much as what you're actually interacting with, the display. If you're deep into the tech world, you may know about the 60Hz controversy which had people bashing this phone all over social media. Basically, to lower the price of the phone to make it more accessible to consumers, Google had to downgrade the display from a high refresh rate of 90Hz to the standard 60Hz, which feels less smooth when interacting with the phone. And if you don't know what that is, the number of Hz refers to how many times a screen refreshes per second, contributing to how smooth or fast a phone feels as shown by the slow motion footage of two phones. One of the biggest tech YouTubers, Marquez Brownlee, called it, and I quote, one of the choppiest displays purely coming from my decade of phone testing experience as he compared it on screen with the 120Hz display of the iPhone 13 Pro, a phone that's more than double the price of this one. This led to tech enthusiasts trashing the phone and making outrageous claims about the phone being unusable. But here's the thing, if you're not a tech enthusiast, it doesn't matter. Most of you came from a phone with a 60Hz display that we've all been using for the past decades, and you're not going to notice the difference during daily use, nor is it worth paying the premium for. The display is pretty great though, being decently bright for indoor and outdoor use, with vibrant and rich colors that are great for content consumption. The stereo speakers with one on the bottom and an amplified earpiece also allows you to listen to music and watch videos and movies immersively, and they get decently loud for the size as well. There is one small issue I have with the display though, which happens to me with the Pixel 6 as well, and it's kind of annoying. You see, when I have the phone in my pocket, for some reason, the screen keeps on waking itself and tapping itself with my thigh, which often emergency dials people for my contacts or starts inputting like a billion numbers on the lock screen pin. I think the reason this could happen could be because of my tight shorts at work and my meteor thighs, and this does cause a little bit of battery drain and unnecessary screen opening, but a quick way I found to fix it is to face the phone outwards in my pocket with the screen out. Also, none of the tech reviewer friends I know face this issue with the Pixel 6 or the 6a, so I think it seems isolated to myself for some reason. Anyways, moving on. If you're coming from an older phone, the addition of an under display fingerprint sensor might be new for you, and it's actually pretty cool. Basically, there's a light and a camera placed under the display that captures the ridges of your fingerprints. And it won't be as fast as physical scanners, but this one definitely has improved greatly over the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro, as it's slightly faster and unlocks my phone 9 times out of 10. There has been a pretty serious bug though, where a small number of users are facing an issue where any finger could unlock the phone, but based on the monthly updates Google pushes out, it's an issue that I believe will soon be fixed and taken care of. And by the way, if you're liking what you're watching so far, feel free to subscribe to the channel to support me and help push out all my videos to the algorithm to help me grow even faster. And now, finally, how does the phone actually perform and feel like with day-to-day -day usage? Without a doubt, it's probably going to be one of the best experiences you'll find on Android. First up, this mid-range phone uses Google's new flagship Tensor chip with really powerful AI for smart features and smooth performance. Apps open up very fast, animations across the UI are very fluid, and I haven't noticed much stuttering or lagging, if at all. 
Apps also stay in the background most of the time, which means that you won't have to constantly reload your apps when switching between them. Now, there have been some talk about the Tensor chip causing the phone to overheat with usage, but I can tell you that it only happens with extended continuous usage, and it does make the phone warm to the touch, but honestly speaking from experience, it happens to any phone and isn't a big issue in my opinion. This phone also runs Android 12 on Google's amazing Pixel UI, which is an absolute treat to use. It's really simple to use and the material you theme that forms around the color palette of your wallpaper does make the phone feel more fun and personalized. There are also so many small touches in the UI that really add to the experience, such as a little bobbing effect when you get to the end of content, the absolutely amazing haptics you feel when typing on the keyboard or navigating the phone, or the way the black fades in and out from the power button when you click on it. The always on display is also beautiful with the big clock, your battery percentage, and even a feature where the phone automatically identifies any song that's playing in the background. And with the smart AI in this phone, you also get a ton of smart features like call screening, which lets Google Assistant take unknown calls instead, and help helps you avoid scam calls, having the ability to easily copy any text or images from any app, and best of all, an insanely powerful voice dictation feature on the Pixel. With this special voice dictation feature, Google is able to make transcriptions incredibly fast and accurate and all offline. It can even fix grammar mistakes, do auto punctuation, and even send by voice. It's been an absolute game changer for me as it replaces finger typing, especially when my hands are busy or when I need to reply to many YouTube comments at once. By far my favorite feature of this phone and it still blows my mind to this day. Also, if you're worried about any of the bugs that plagued the Pixel 6 launch, that's pretty much all been fixed now and with Android 13 that's supposed to come out soon, it's reportedly much more stable and smooth. This phone will also support three major OS updates and five years of security updates too, which will keep your phone running smoothly for the years to come. And as for battery performance, I think this phone does fairly well. It's definitely not going to surpass the insane battery life of any of the iPhones, but it does do better than my Pixel 6 and my S22. And that's because this phone uses a 60Hz and smaller 1080p display than the Pixel 6, adding on to its battery longevity. And after using this phone for a couple of weeks and allowing adaptive battery to kick in, I've been averaging a respectable 5 hours of screen on time a day, and that definitely does last me to the end of the day, and sometimes a day and a half with some really light usage. And last but not least, the cameras. The trend continues with the phone being simple and easy to use because I personally believe this is the best point and shoot camera experience on any phone. Although the camera hardware is lacking in comparison to the latest sensors on more premium devices, Google's camera processing makes these the best processed photos out of any phone camera. And yes, better than Samsung and definitely the iPhone. As the Pixel's main selling point, the camera is extremely consistent with pictures looking beautiful and punchy and everything being evenly exposed so you won't have any crushed shadows or blown out highlights. The colors are also consistent and look vibrant without looking too unnatural, which makes these photos social media ready. Now, because the sensor is slightly older, night photos might be a little grainy, but Google's night sight mode does help improve images taken in low light dramatically, through the use of a longer exposure and a bit of Google's magical processing powers. There's also a useful ultrawide camera which allows you to zoom the camera out to 0.6x to fit larger objects and more people in the frame. It also allows you to take some pretty dramatic photos of land and cityscapes which look great. Likewise, the selfie camera uses the same processing to ensure all your selfies look well exposed and colorful. Portrait mode also looks really good if you want to emulate a DSLR-like look in your pictures of people. And just touching on video, the same great processing can also be found, with support for 4K60 on the rear cameras and 1080p on the selfie camera. If you do want to check out how well the video performs, I do have a really fun day in life vlog with the Pixel 6a, which I definitely suggest you check out after the video. You'll also be able to relive a day with me and see how the phone actually performs throughout the day. But anyways, this is a camera that can be trusted 99% of the time. There's no shutter lag and actually an AI feature where Google makes sure faces aren't blurred, a top shot mode where you can pick the best frame for each image, and even a cool magic eraser feature that's made possible by the Tensor chip. Basically, with the magic eraser, you can erase pretty much any object or distractions in the image decently well as long as the background is simple enough. And that's basically it for the video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and I hope you can see how great of a deal this phone is for $449. It's honestly my default recommendation for anyone looking for a phone because it has all the feature one needs and does them well too. There's no need to drop like a thousand dollars on a phone that you only text, browse social media, and take the occasional photos with. And if I wasn't a tech YouTuber, I'd be perfectly happy with using this phone for three years. And on that note, thanks again for watching the video. Feel free to leave any burning questions you have about this phone down below in the comments and also try my best to answer them. Also, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button and check out some of the other awesome content I have on my channel. 
All right, have a good one, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.